Hey, Will. Yes, Bob. I like that movie, but the comic was better. Yeah, I get that a lot. From arrogant... Uh... Assholes. <laughs>hate when people say that. Yeah. I hate when right after a movie they go, oh, but the comic was better. What if, what if I didn't read the comic? I mean, you have to not do that. Stephen King, um, because more movies have been made off of Stephen King's books than any other author, living or dead, right now. And he said, like, you, they're apples and oranges. They really are, and they have to yeah. be. That being said, you know, there are certain situations where, you know, the comic, yes, is generally better. This is more so for not the superhero movies, because those are taking from, like, years and years and years of... Yeah, many different stories. Yeah. Uh, we're talking more along the lines of, um, like, Watchmen or V for Vendetta. Things right. like that. So, so, so we are going to be those Yes. <laughs> movies that didn't do uh, a good job of telling the story. As good of a, a job as the comics did. Right. Uh, you mentioned Alan Moore. Yes. Basically, any anything Alan Moore has created when they try to make it a movie, it just it just is terrible. Also, because Alan Moore doesn't endorse any of the movies. Yeah, and he specifically makes his books to be as unfilmable as possible. Right. So I don't it, know why. I mean, it, could, it works because it plays with things that like only comic books can do and movies can't, and that's what part of what makes them great comic books. But of all the things that have ever been done based on his work, the closest that has ever come to a truly faithful adaptation is that one episode of Justice League based on his Superman story for the man who has everything. And that's because that's like a relatively simple Superman story. But you look at a story like Watchmen, which is very dense, very, you know, deep, very much plays off of the comic book um, aesthetic, and then you, you make it a movie, and the movie, it tried to be faithful in its own thing and wound up being neither. In, in the beginning, it was really faithful. Yeah. It started off really faithful and then, like, things started happening that were, like, a little different because, and then it, like, went completely off the rails. Yeah, because it tried to keep it, it tried to keep everything as simple as possible and just use the base level of what Watchmen is, but there's so much underneath that it didn't put in and that's what, you know, distracted from its overall quality. Watchmen, if you really think about it, in bits and pieces, it's good. But as a whole, it just falls apart. Because right. the comic was made as a whole, you know, whereas the movie tried to be that and it didn't work. Right. So. What, what else do we have? We have Judge Dredd. Judge Dredd. Now, this is interesting. I didn't see the, uh, the first Judge the Dredd The Stallone movie. Judge Dredd movie? Yeah, I didn't Here's see the that. thing about Judge Dredd. The original 95 Stallone Judge Dredd movie, it, for all intents and purposes, got the look and the aesthetic right. The problem is they got... Judge Dredd and the attitude wrong. Judge Dredd is a very violent, very dangerous, very dirty world, and Dredd as a person is just, you know, he's Dirty Harry escalated to the nth degree. Like, you do not f around with Judge Dredd. I love me some Dirty Harry. Yeah. This dirty, Judge Dredd is basically Dirty Harry times 10. And he never takes off his helmet. That's a big thing, because he represents the faceless, the facelessness of the law. You know, it could be anybody. And, you know, about, you know, 10 minutes into the first movie, he so long takes off the helmet, which is weird because at that's actually the point where the movie becomes unwatchable. <laughs> like it starts off like okay, it's well because they had Stallone, they need to you know get yeah. their money's worth. It's kind of it's kind of silly. It's kind of a silly movie. I know it's so bad, it's good, but then the second it takes off and it's just nose dives and quality. It's weird. It, I'm not saying it's Stallone's fault, but I'm just saying like it, there's a connection. That being said, the recent Dread movie with Carl Urban got the look and the aesthetic of Dread not a hundred percent. But it did everything else so right. Like, yeah. that is Judge Dredd to a T. That was a damn good movie. Yeah. That was a damn good comic book movie. That was a good Judge Dredd movie. Um, I mean, if it wasn't a Judge Dredd movie, if it was some other character, I would have never seen it, and I would have no, yeah. no uh, reason to want to see it. Yeah. But it was a good Judge Dredd movie. <laughs> yes, very, very good. And, you know, Dredd didn't, uh, didn't take his mask off, so yeah. there you go. I heard that actor said that uh, it was really, really hard frowning so much. Yeah, yeah. Carl Urban. Yeah, but yeah. He's, he had the frown, so. <laughs> right. Um, 
Another comic book movie that people A forget is a comic book movie and B are surprised when they find out the difference in tone um, is The Mask. I'm surprised that's a comic book movie. Yeah. The thing is, because The Mask, we've all, we've all seen The Mask. It's a very, very fun Jim Carrey comedy, all this and that, you know, really funny. The comic book is the exact opposite. It's very dark. The Mask is the villain. He's a vicious serial killer, you know, and it's just, it's nothing like what you're used to. He's not even called the mask in the mo in the comic. He's called Big Head. And he just mercilessly kills everybody he comes across, even people who don't deserve it. And the cop who's, like, chases after him and puts on a mask and does the same thing. Becomes a murderous psychopath. Yeah, so, like, the mask just makes you a horrible... Horrible so the good movie. guy is this cop that's... Yeah, it, but then he puts it. on the mask and he becomes the bad guy. Why would you put on the mask? It must have been an accident. I don't know. <laughs> Didn't read it. <laughs> he but, tripped and <laughs> fell into the mask? Yeah. <laughs> but I do like, you know, telling people that, hey, you know, this is, uh... That's a thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> also, Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass and I would say the works of Mark Millar in general. It's weird because whereas Alan Moore, movies based on his comics, um, are generally aren't very good, and he wants something to do with them. The works of uh, Mark Millar, he actively wants something to do with them. In fact, most of his comic work now are really just elaborate pitches for movies. <laughs> um, but yeah, they change, a, they change a lot. I will I say mean, John Amita Jr.'s best work ever. Yeah, Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass is definitely some of his Everything else work. not so great. <laughs> um, Put up picture of Superman's hand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, um... That, was gonna that, that movie, like, I understood why they couldn't do a lot of stuff, because the comic was, like, very, uh, very violent. And yeah, very, very dark, and the ending is actually, like, really depressing. Yeah. It's weird, because, like, Kick-Ass, the movie, treated its main character better than the comic book did. I mean, like, it just, because the comic book really portrayed Kick-Ass as kind of a loser, Whereas the movie portrayed him as, like, you know, your typical movie lovable loser, like the Bad News Bears or something like that. Right. You know, but, like, the comic book actively, like, wanted you to make fun of him. Right. Whereas in the movie, like, you were more rooting for him. Spoiler alert, in the movie, he, and he gets with the girl and whatever. Yeah. And in the comic, he does not get he with the girl. He does not get with the girl. In fact, the girl takes a picture of her and her new boyfriend's wiener. Yeah. And sends, sends it to it him. him. And wasn't the new boyfriend a bad guy? I think. Uh, he's yeah. like a thug. Yeah. So. Very dark. Oh, and then he masturbates to it. Yeah. That's the, in the in the in the movie. There's a whole masturbation thing that they touch upon for like two seconds. Yeah. And that's a big. That's part a of the big comic. deal in the comic. Yeah, yeah. That's that's why he has to masturbate yeah. to the picture of his girlfriend. So. It's really sad. Yeah. It's to make it more and more sad, but they they missed that in the movie. Not well. Like I understand why they couldn't have that in the movie. Yeah. A lot more people are going to see that than read the comic. Along those lines, um, another Mark Millar comic, uh, Wanted, drastically different. That was the same guy? Same guy. I didn't know that. That was, um, I think J.G. Jones was the artist on that. Wanted, the movie, is about, you know, a league of assassins who are trying to secretly, you know, make the world a better place by murdering people. Wanted, the comic, is basically what happens if the supervillains win, and they travel to alternate dimensions and try and murder other superheroes. And there's, I think, a giant shit monster. Like, he's literally made out of shit. That sounds there, so much better. There is, I, I think, one of the like main characters gets like brutally raped at one point. I guess, like, the, the giant theme of all this is if you're going to make a comic book that's viciously violent and it gets option to be a movie, expect it to be lightened the hell up. Because okay. Hollywood doesn't do depressing unless you're a certain person. So. What about League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Just kidding. <laughs> what do you guys think? I can go on about that. I know. I yeah. know you can. Because League is amazing. The comic, not the Yeah, movie. I was going to say. Yeah. What do you guys think? Any uh, movies that you thought the comic was better? I'm sure there are. Specifically, the non-superhero ones. Like. Your 300s or your Sin Cities. Sin, Sin, Sin why, out this why not? Say whatever the hell yeah. you want. Talk to us. Yes. Also, like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you really like it. Thank you very much. Have a uh, good week. Good. Oh, I thought we were going to no. do like a thing. No, we okay. were not.
Comic book art is sequential art. It's illustrations that tell a story in sequence. And that's the number one most important thing that any comic book artist should know and be able to do. You have to be able to tell a story. After the first time she kills another human being, she's saddened and horrified and disgusted at what she's done and what the world around her is making her do. And yet seconds after that scene, the game basically becomes Gears of War, where you, the player, make Laura shoot dudes without any problem at all. 